Hello, this is Seamus and 7MYW. A few weeks ago, you might have seen there was a video, a couple of videos actually, on a couple of bags of radio gear that I picked up at the CPAC Amateur Radio Convention over in Seaside, Oregon. Within those bags contained various accessories, some radios, some vintage radios, and this. Uh, one of the one of the only radios in that, that package, an assortment of bags that I had received, that actually had everything with it. Uh, I was not familiar with this particular model. Now, I'm definitely familiar with the Huoshan um, uh, line of radios. They've been very, very popular for the last few years and have uh, come into their own a little bit. But this particular model I was not familiar with. So it was a complete surprise to see within those bags this particular model, the KGU V6X, and um, come to find out that this radio is came out about 2012. It's been around a while, um, and I didn't know what what was in this box or anything. So, really, yes, I have looked into it before, but uh, kind of an unboxing now. This particular model, which is a dual band uh, amateur radio and commercial radio. So it's going to do uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters, but it will also um, broadcast or can also be used to transmit on commercial frequencies, FRS, GMRS. It will also, uh, it will also work on marine frequencies or fire departments, or if you're a volunteer fireman, or it'll work on all of those. So it is Type 90 accepted, so it's, uh, it is fully legal to use. Uh, as said, this came out in 2012. It came with the programming cable, which I hate to say, this particular programming cable was uh, was meant for Windows all the way up until Windows Vista. But after that, this no longer works. So I had to go to PowerWorks and pick up this cable. It's the uh, new programming cable for everything from uh, 8.1 on up, or from Windows 8 on up. So that allowed me to be able to get onto the software. Now this particular ham who had this before me uh, even still had the receipts inside of the box from when he purchased it. Purchased it at Ham Radio Outlet in 2012. Uh, he paid uh, $189 for it. It's, uh, it's a nice radio. Don't get me wrong here. It's, uh, it's not a, a radio that I'm used to. Mainly because uh, I usually the, the radios that I get when it comes to handhelds are usually your, your basic threes. Your Kenwoods, ICOM, and Yesu. I'm very much a Yesu fan, but I also like ICOM and Kenwood too. This Hoshan radio, let me pull it on out of here, is actually quite uh, quite nice. It's it's well built, I will say that, and if it's it's being uh, labeled as a commercial radio, I will say that it is. Uh, it seems like it's that it's well made. Uh, comes with the battery pack and uh, also take out this it also comes with the charging base and of course the plug-in gives you uh, an antenna it's just your standard everyday antenna in fact I could tell I had been sitting in the box that this antenna has uh, definitely been around the bend a little bit it had previously been programmed uh, with uh, some fire department frequencies and some other commercial frequencies that the uh, that the uh, fellow before me had programmed in there. I couldn't get this thing to program at all. Uh, I was trying to figure out a way until I finally read online. Thank you, uh, <laughs> thank you for Google and for being able to find out why. But apparently, when you put in the drivers in the software, you need to make sure that the COM port is under under ten. It cannot be a COM port over the number 10. So you have to go in and find the Silicone Labs drivers, relabel it as something under COM 10, and then it works just fine. So this particular uh, radio is... Uh, let's see if I can get it a little bit closer here. And you can, uh, can hear that it's working. I have it now programmed on a couple of frequencies, uh, mainly a 2 meter, 440. It, it's... It's definitely older technology, there's no doubt, and i got to find a way to get that to work. See if I can get it close enough to... But uh, it, It's older technology. It has 200 channels, so that's, that's a fair amount of channels, that's fine. Um, 
but the fact that it'll operate commercial frequencies is, is quite nice if, if somebody really does want to use that. I really have no need for commercial frequencies, to be honest, although I do have to admit that having frequencies available for marine bands would be nice. If, if I go boating with friends, it would be nice to have the marine frequencies for that. So, came with, uh, with all of that and the cable and the adapter. Of course, uh, it's a pretty well-written manual. You can definitely see that uh, <laughs> there needs to be more care in, in translating some of these manuals from uh, Chinese to English, but uh, it also comes with a voice, a voice feature that will announce the frequencies. It'll announce the channel. Um, it's pretty easy to program. Uh, the, the software is a little outdated, there's no doubt, and there's only so much you can do with it, but for what you get, this is nice. Would I pay $189 for this? No, I really wouldn't. Honestly, the, other than the fact that it's a commercial radio as well as an amateur radio, I would much rather have a Yaesu FT70 or one of the other, uh, one of the other brands than this. Uh, and that's not a, that is definitely not a slam on Woshan. I think that they make a good product. Uh, from the the radios that I've actually been able to play with they they fit well in the hand as you can see um, They're well made and I, I think that uh, For their time they were good. I think though that nowadays when it comes to uh, the Options that you can get on these radios that perhaps you can you can do a little bit better But here again not a slam on that company. They did a good job for what they had back in 2012 especially so that's a, just a short, brief review of the KG UV6X. I know that the KG UV6D was a relatively popular radio, a uh, dual bander for ham radio, and uh, this does all that too, in addition to the commercial frequencies, especially marine frequencies. Now, if this were able to either monitor or to broadcast on 220, that would have made this a radio that I would most definitely keep. As for now, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this. Uh, I have everything for it now, so I might uh, I might sell it to somebody who can use it, especially for somebody who wants commercial frequencies. I'm not into GMRS or FRS, uh, but other than marine channels, that would really be about the only other option for me. So I might program it with some of those. Uh, and you just have to be careful that when you're broadcasting or when you're when you're transmitting that uh, if you don't have a license for those, don't do it. <laughs> Marine channels, you don't have to have a license anymore to take a handheld boating with you. So that part is, is good to know. Um, but anyway, short review, uh, KG UV6X. I hope that you appreciated and enjoyed this. Uh, I will hope to do some more videos soon about a couple of the other radios that I received in that bag from him. From the ham fest but i thought that this one was worthy of its own and uh, i will i'll take this out for a test spin and see how well it does out and about i'm definitely going to replace that antenna though so that is uh that is what i think uh, about this cave kg uv6x if you enjoyed this video boy hit that like button uh, up above in the the notifications bell icon for the next video i put out and uh put your comments down below what you think about this brand or this radio Thank you so much for watching, 73 from N7MYW.